If you did not listen to the previous episode, I want you to go back and listen to it. Or if you're on YouTube, hello, I see you, you see me. Uh, Does my church need a bookkeeper? We are talking to Brooke Cecil, Director of Client Relations at Belay. Uh, She really just knocked it out of the park with the questions we had on this brief podcast. Um, That's why I wanted her to do two, because I knew that there was going to be a lot of information that we want to hear from Belay. But let me talk about Belay for just a minute. They're the experts who help busy church leaders accomplish more with remote staffing, something they have done since 2010. I mentioned in the first episode, Church Answers has been with them. If it's not 2010, it's pretty close to it. I mean, I, I can I can remember the other name of the company before it became Belay. I can remember a lot of the details of it, but we've been with them. And obviously, if we're with Belay that long, that means we are a pleased client. And Brooke is the Director of Client Relations. So, Brooke, welcome. You have a pleased client in Church Answers and Tom Rayner. I love it. Thank you. We love you being a client of ours. We appreciate it. It's an honor. Well, it is It is mutual. Uh, I want to talk about this uh, new resource that Belay has. Uh, it's called Four Costly Financial Mistakes for Churches. Get it. Read it. Mm, share it with people in your church that need to know about it, and uh, you will be benefited from it. And we're going to kind of segue talking to talking to Brooke. By the way, once again, go back and listen or view that first episode that we just did, the previous episode with Brooke. Um, let's let's talk about how a bookkeeper can help pastors, particularly, or maybe their ex- XPs, executive pastors, associate pastors, whatever the case may be, with financial decisions. And I've got to tell you, Brooke, we have this continuous forum. It's a Q&A type of uh, environment where pastors and other church leaders are asking church answers questions. And usually they come in about every five or 10 minutes, even even at night, because we have uh, a global audience. And one of the more common ones, one of the more common category of questions is financial, because Most pastors were not trained in finance. Many pastors got a biblical degree in college and or seminary, and they just are not prepared for this. So let's just get down to the broad question. How can a bookkeeper help pastors in financial decision making? Yeah, so I think that there's kind of two buckets that I look at in terms of how we can support um, a pastor. And the first is providing accurate, up-to-date reporting. The client or the the pastor needs to see kind of where the church is and kind of the state of the union, if you will. And so a bookkeeper being able to provide accurate information by ministry or by event, I think is crucial. Um, I think that that will, you know, call out potential areas of concern or be able to celebrate great areas of growth that may be, you know, that you're experiencing within your ministry. Um, it'll help you determine where you are to be able to do staffing, um, whether you need to eliminate events or programs based upon just where giving is. Um, and then also just being able to track that giving um, in a more accurate way in terms of you know, designated giving um, or general, general giving as well. Um, and I think the second thing is just being able to help develop financial controls. When we look at finances and the way that things are coming in and out of the church, it can quickly feel overwhelming um, because there's a lot of moving parts. But I think developing approval processes, working alongside the ministry team, how we pay our bills and the workflow with that um, and even reimbursement and expenses. You know, we all know that those pastors come in to maybe speak at an event um, or we have a musician come in, they need to get paid. We need to make sure that they're getting paid. So providing those appropriate places um, and those measures, putting in together those controls, I think can be extremely beneficial and help reduce the burden from the pastors. Very few pastors will have moral failure. Moral failure can be of different kinds. One of the moral failures, of course, is financial. And many church members will look at the moral failure of one pastor, particularly in the area of finances, that's the area we're talking about, and they will then lump all other pastors in that. All the pastor wants is money. All the pastor is doing is this. We hear this continuously. It is unfortunate. But when you 
are providing this service, what you're doing is you're providing a distance between the pastor and the money. You're providing guardrails. I'm, I'm adding different kind of metaphors in there, but you're providing those guardrails. That to me is one of the most important things that you do in your bookkeeping. Absolutely. Area. Absolutely. And we do it in a way that, you know, for us personally, we're not even touching the money. We have systems set up in place where we have approval processes so we can see from start to finish the time that a bill was kind of in our possession to the time somebody approved it. So we can have that credibility for the church to be able to say, here is a time stamped process of who approved the bill when the bill was released, um, just to keep things above reproach. I think that that is so critical. The other critical factor, not necessarily in the moral area, but it's just in the area of overwhelm. There is so much for pastors that they have to check off every day, every week, every month, and they just feel overwhelmed. And one of the things many pastors do is say, I'm just going to push finances aside. I don't want to know anything about it. Uh, maybe they don't have to know everything about it, but I don't want a pastor not to know anything about it. What, what does Belay do with this help with overwhelm and managing and maintaining church finances? Yeah, so... With our bookkeepers, they will get in and they, as I mentioned, they'll kind of help develop a plan. Uh, but like I mentioned on the last episode, we have a team of what we call client success consultants that can sit down with a pastor or with the team and look at their financials and offer recommendations based upon what the where the financials are of, you know, have you thought through this? Or maybe we can help develop a process that would make reimbursements more simple for your team to get you pastor out of that responsibility. Um, and so we can come alongside them to kind of help guide them. Um, and then I think another thing is, you know, we work with a lot of nonprofit CPAs to where if we're, you know, we're stepping into a scenario where it would be of benefit to do an audit or something like that, that we have great partnerships that we can come alongside and help that church ensure that things are above reproach. Um, and they can still stand in good standing with their 5013C status. The, those who have been working with us from Belay um, for well over a decade now, we, 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 we feel like they're part of the team. They're part of the family. In fact, they're, they're, most of the time we stop thinking about them being a Belay person because mm -hmm. Belay is doing all the work behind the scenes, do, uh, getting them paid, getting all the uh, documentation done. So, you know, it's, it's seamless for us. I, I, I want you to just talk about how that bookkeeper is a personal team player for the church or the nonprofit or the organization when they uh, come from Belay. Yeah, absolutely. So our bookkeepers, they they have a heart to serve the local church. That's why they come to Belay. And um, they have years of experience and they want to do all that they can to serve that ministry with excellence. And we have story after story of how they have come alongside and been with them, you know, for 10 plus years, kind of like you alluded to earlier of your time even here that they they are part of the ministry, that they are bought into what they're doing. So they are celebrating those great um, achievements, you know, whether it's a new building or whatever it might be, that they feel that they are invested and they are a part of that. Um, you know, that comes through communication. And just as you have that communication with people that are on site, it's just as important that you have that communication with your virtual bookkeeper as well. Um, that's what builds those relationships and that rapport. Um, and I think that, you know, for us, that's what sets us apart in the industry is that we truly care that it's more transactional, that we do care to serve and to ensure that we are relational in all that we do. Well, time's almost up, just like the first episode we did with you, Brooke. It's gone very, very quickly. But you explained in the previous episode the concept of a fractional worker Close out, close out with that, because I, I want our churches and other organizations to understand that with with beliefs. Yeah. So for us, in terms of our churches, we look at it from just a budget standpoint. So we want to meet you where you are. Um, and so we want to evaluate your budget here, understand your needs. So those um, our engagements start around five to eight hours per month and then scale up just depending upon the size of your church. Um, and we take several things into account to kind of help 
determine what we feel like would be a good number of hours, but that's kind of our starting point. Um, but with fractional, it's still that full service bookkeeping. So you're still getting someone paying your bills, paying your payroll, you're still getting those monthly financials. So all of those things, it's not a piecemeal service, it is that full service opportunity. So it does free you up to do ministry. This has been great, Brooke. We've been talking to Brooke Cecil, Director of Client Relations at Belay. Um, I love the, when we have Belay come on because I just I learn something every time, but our churches and our pastors and other organizations learn as well. So thank you for being with us uh, from Belay, Brooke. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. So we want to remind you that our friends at Belay are experts on helping busy church leaders accomplish more with their remote staffing. Uh, they've been doing that since 2010, and they've got a new resource. And by the time I say this a third time or fourth time, it won't be as new, but it is still many of you have not downloaded it. Download four costly financial mistakes for churches. Get that uh, download and share it with those of who are in the know in finances. Read it yourself. It'll be very, very helpful. How do you get it? You just text Tom, T-H-O-M, Tom, at 55123. Or we also have all the information in our show notes as well. Well, we have been talking with Brooke Cecil, Director of Client Relations at Belay. Of course, they are our sponsor as well, but it's been a joy to hear from her and to see what Belay is doing. Really a major contributor for God's work in the kingdom. Thank you, listeners and viewers, for being a part of the Church Answers podcast. We'll see you in the next episode.